Hi, and welcome back to our hands-on tool demo of Canoe for Software, where I'm going to show you how you can your, test your system on a test at a pure SIL level. And for that, we are going to create a SIL adapter, and I'm going to show you how you can put it into your software application. Okay. For that, we are going to use a sample configuration that we ship with Canoe for Software. It's called the SIL Adapter Basic Demo, and I've loaded it up already here in Canoe for Software. The idea of this application or demo is quite simple. We test a room temperature control logic that, depending on the average temperature of three uh, room temperature sensors, determines whether or not some heating or cooling should be turned on or off. It's simply some Boolean toggles for each case. and. Depending on the average temperature of the room, if it lies above a certain threshold, the application should turn on the cooling. If we fall under another threshold, we should turn on the heating as written down here. So what do we need for this? Obviously, our system under test needs sensor data. We have three sensors shown here. And we want to observe the behavior of our system under test and for that, we're going to need to monitor its output as indicated here. So we have to sh uh, see uh, if the heating and the cooling has been turned on respectively. Okay, how do we do this? Like I said earlier in my presentation, we use the VCDL format for this. And with a demo, we ship a VCDL file, which has been already set up for it. Let me show the details to you. So. Here we have the VCDL editor that shows the contents of the VCDL file. And I'm going to uh, over the details here pretty much uh, bottom to top. So again, we said we need three sensors. And for that, we have three sensor objects here declared in the VCDL file. And each of those sensors is an instance of the interface iSensor. Let's have a look at it. If I expand it here, we see that this interface provides one temperature value. So we use the keyword provided here. That means Canoe provides the data. The data means it's some data item. It's not a method. And the data type is double in this case, some floating point value, which we have given the name temperature. This is all we need for the sensors. And to monitor the outputs, we use here this object heating on the bottom. The heating object is an instance of the interface I heating. This one consumes two values, the cooling state and the heating state. Consumes means it's just the opposite of provided. That is, now our system under test must provide the values and Canoe observes it. So Canoe for software consumes this, these values. In this case, the data type is called state. This is not a built-in primitive type. It is a enumeration that we've defined here on the top. So. If we expand it, we see it's quite simple, just two states off and on, but it's quite nice to see it in the output if we have uh, labels and not just a Boolean and zero and one. Okay, we have declared everything in the VCDL. How do we get our SIL adapter? I will switch back to the setup window and here the systems and communication setup. So once we import the VCDL file, let me just re-import this here quickly. All the objects that have been declared here will show up in the System Explorer. We have here the system definition, and here we have a list of all the distributed objects. We can dive down in the room temperature control namespace, and here we see all our objects. Since we want to test our application, Canoe has to play the role of its environment, like I said earlier. So that means we have to configure the environment for our SUT. And since we want to have all these three, uh, four things here in the environment, we select them and move them in this folder test environment here. So one more thing that we have to do, and then we're good with our SIL adapter. We simply have to say we want a SIL adapter. We do this by right-clicking here and select new SIL adapter. And then this entry for the SIL adapter shows up. We can give it a name under which we can identify it at a later point. It's just for you and has not a role in the, in the program later. 
we can select the programming language. It's either C++ or Python. Python is quite nice in the IoT world and C++ helps in the native world. If you're interested in a pure C uh, SIL adapter, uh, we don't offer this directly, but you can simply use simple wrapper functions around the C++ code that we generate. We have also an example for this in this um, in the sample config. So we have to select a folder where we want to generate a SIL adapter to. For this, here we have the folder where my SUT lies and we simply select this SIL adapter folder here. Once we've done this, we can click on this generate SIL adapter button on the bottom, wait just a few seconds, and then we are hopefully, as here it's the case, greeted with a nice success pop-up. Okay, so. That's all you have to do to get the code to put into your system under test. So let me open the folder and I will give you a brief overview of what has been generated. If we have a look here at the SIL adapter folder, we see dependencies. Those are just underlying communication infrastructure and the type library contains everything that is tailored to your needs. So here we see a lot of headers that are generic for any SIL adapter, but if we look at the room temperature control uh, folder here, this directly corresponds to this namespace. So here we see the interfaces that have been declared here in the VCDL file. Let me go up a few folders again. This is the top folder of the SIL adapter. And what you see here is that we generate a CMake lists file for you. If you use CMake, which is really handy for cross-platform development, you can just reference the CMake file and then um, everything is linked to your SIL adapter and you can use it right out of the box. Okay, how do we do this? Let's go to Visual Studio because there we can see further details. I'm going to use the open folder feature of Visual Studio. However, I have already uh, launched Visual Studio to save some time. So let me just switch to it here. So here we see the CMake project as it has been opened in Visual Studio. And we are currently interested in the C++ version, which contains of three CPP files. If we have a look at the main file, we see that this uh, executes an infinite loop. Uh, this is where the control logic is executed. Uh, this function control room temperature is used for that and it is executed every 100 milliseconds. So let's have a look what this function does. Yeah, like I said earlier in the, uh, in the introduction of the demo, we need to get the sensor values. So therefore we have three calls to get sensor value to get access to the sensor data. Based on that, we calculate the average temperature. And again, based on the average temperature and the threshold, we determine whether the heating state and the cooling state should be set. And then we apply these decision back to our actuator to uh, tell this to the environment. So let's have a look at this function because this contains the data to connect it with CNU for software. Here we have already made the instrumentation. We have commented out the original code that would read from the hardware the data and we've replaced it with a call to our cell adapter as you can see here. Again, we see that it directly matches the VCDL. We have the namespace room temperature control as here. We have an object sensor one, just like here. And since sensor one is an instance of iSensor uh, with a temperature member, we can simply read out this temperature data here. You can see that we do this multiple times for the different sensors. And um, we can also do it in the opposite direction for setting the output values. So if we have a look at the set heating state, which takes these new states, we can simply set the heating state and cooling state member of the object heating uh, and those members here. And since we have put it here in uh, directly in code, what you see here in the VCDL, you can also use uh, auto completion provided by Visual Studio. So if we um, put here a dot, you see that we have access to IntelliSense. You see that there's this temperature control, uh, this temperature value member, and we have this fast expansion here. So it's really easy to come up and set up the SIL adapter. Okay, so. 
I think this should give you an early idea. Um, let me compile this, fire the application up, and let's play around with it with Canufa software. Okay, so compilation runs, should succeed. Okay, everything's good, and we can start our application. In the example, we have debug output every one second where we simply say what the current values is that we have received or read. Here we see all zeros that are the initial values that we have set and these are not coming yet from Canoe for software because the two processes are not yet connected because simply the measurement has not been started, what I'm going to do here now. So I've done this and you see that the connection has been immediately established. You see this by the uh, output of the uh, SUT showing up here. Since it's quite cold, we have turned on the heating. And what I really think is quite cool is that we can now fiddle directly with our SUT. We can really turn virtual knobs and see how our SUT reacts. And now that I've reached an average temperature of 22 degrees Celsius, we are in some sweet spot where we see, say we need neither cooling nor heating. And if I go further up, um, we switch the AC or the cooling on. And as you can see here, we directly see the values that are provided by Canoe for software in our SUT. So now that I have this, I can really use all the features in Canoe for software to stimulate our SUT and observe its behavior. For example, I can use my signal generators, which I'm going to turn on here. And this is a really easy way to apply a vast range of different values and combination of values to, our, to the SUT. Here it's simply some sign and ramps, but it's quite helpful. And you can see in the graphics window, you can see the values that are provided to the system under test. And you can also see that according to the average temperature, then the heating and cooling are turned on and off respectively. We can use our trace window to see in detail what is going on. We see all the values that are sent to our SUT. For example, the three temperature values here marked as direction TX and we see the cooling and the heating state being received from our system under test. Also here in the state tracker, we see um, in a different representation, the uh, state that is currently, uh, that our system under test is currently in. Okay, let me stop this because the uh, this interactive testing of our system under test is not the only means. We can only, of course, use automated tests. For this, we have included in our demo a, uh, a test suite that has been created with VTest Studio. We see a couple of test cases here, and I can simply click here on start to run all those tests, which are then executed. All the uh, the values are then applied to our uh, system under test and we see that it behaves co correctly. All the verdicts are set to past and if something fails or does not work, it's much easier to debug directly uh, the software because you're just one step away from your Visual Studio where you can, at whatever point you're interested in, uh, put some breakpoint, you will be directly there. You see the last values that have been received from um, CNU for software or also internal values, of course. And then you can continue with uh, the application. And um, yeah, it's simply a easier experience for the debugging. Okay, this already concludes my tool demonstration for silt testing with CNU for software. I hope I was able to show you that it's really super easy to generate a SIL adapter based on an interface declaration with the VCDL and that it's quite simple to include this code into your system on the test. And with that, that you have a really powerful way to test the dynamics of your application, both in an interactive and also in an automated way. Thank you for watching and I'm looking forward to your questions now.